So inshallah ta'ala, hadith number three. So main, main points, we want you to make sure that you get into your minds and try to note it down, my brothers and sisters. The third hadith, At-Tuhuru Shatrul Iman, purity. Rawahu Muslim an Abi Malik al-Ash'ari. Purity is half of faith. Muslim Sharif. Commentary. We should heed to this hadith in particular regarding general purity. A Muslim, as Muslims, we need to be clean whether it is from najasat haqiqi like blood, urine and stool, or from najasat hukmi like hadas in need of wuzu and janaba in need of ghusl. Also, we must appear outwardly clean. Hence, we ought to be both pure and clean as was the noble habit of our beloved Prophet Islam puts a lot of emphasis on personal hygiene and cleanliness to the extent that one of the first revelation that our beloved Prophet ﷺ received was and keep your clothing clean and stay away from filth. <clears throat> Islam has taught mankind purification in such detail that even a small percentage of which in comparison is not found in any other religion. Unfortunately, it is we Muslims who are neglectful and careless regarding general purity and cleanliness. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability to uphold the true teachings of Islam. Okay, so this is very important, especially now when we have this coronavirus. So basically, look at the beauty of Islam. If you are performing our five time prayers, we'll be washing our hands. We wash our hands and we start up to the race. That's a sunnah. And then we wash the hands again in the faras as well. Up to the elbows, three times, subhanallah. So if a person is doing that five times a day, and not only then, he's also doing it before eating. The barakat of the food is to wash your hands before eating and wash your hands after eating. The hadith says that when you wake up in the morning, don't put your hands into the vessel until you don't wash your hands three times. And he says, La yadri aina batat yaduhu. No one knows where his hands has been moving around at night time. So a person needs to wash his hands. So all this time a person goes to the bathroom, we after using the toilet tissue, we wash with our hands, we use water. So all this is a person, purity in Islam has that value, that importance. In one hadith, the Prophet ﷺ says, make sure your yards, your gardens are clean. Your gardens are clean. So if the gardens have to be clean, <coughs> so if you do an analogy here, then how important it is to have your house clean? And if you need to have your house clean, how important it is to have your bedroom clean, which way you're going to sleep? <coughs> so if your bedroom has to be clean, how important it is to have your body clean, your clothing? Because that's with your body all the time. Then how important it is to have your body itself clean? Then how important it will be to clean your inside, your spiritual the illnesses that are there? Just imagine that how important this is. That's why it's very important to keep that iman at tuhuru shatul iman. Like we always read in the packets, in the crisp wrappers, keep Britain tidy. Islam has taught us keep the world tidy. Keep the world tidy. Wherever you go, look at the beauty of Islam. That to this extent, that in the hadith he says that this person, he was forgiven for just moving a thorn, a moving a twig, moving a branch of a tree from the path which was disturbing the people. So this is our teachings of Islam. And we have forgotten this. We will be driving in the car, we spit out, we throw, we've just had a can of coke, we'll just throw it through the window. And it, this is a bad habit. Spitting outside. These are all against hygiene, against Islamic teachings. We don't realize all this. This is very important, Tuhuru Shatrul Iman. That's why a person needs to keep in mind that one of the first verses, Ya ayyuhal muddathir kum fa angdir wa rabbaka fa kabbir wa thiyabaka fa tahir wa rujza fa hajul. That wa thiyabaka fa tahir, one of the first revelation. So Iqra Bismi was revealed, then one of the surah which was revealed was Ya ayyuhal muddathir. In the first years of prophethood, that was revealed. That wa thiyabaka fa tahir, your clothes, <coughs> make sure that it is clean. Or Rujza Fahjur, make sure all impurity you are clean. Whether it's the impurity, spiritual impurity of idol worshipping, of evil habits, and also cleanliness. Now we read in kitabs, those who have studied Talimul Haq, Talimul Islam, 
Nur al Iza and all those kitab, you come over the categories where there's two types of najasat. Najasat haqiqi, najasat hukmi. Najasat haqiqi, those types of impurity which can't be seen. Then these are two categories. Najasat ghaliza, najasat khafifa. Najasat ghaliza, for example, the heavy impurity, blood, the urine of human beings, excretion of human beings, wine, so alcohol, all these things are najas ghaliza. Najas the khafifa, they have categorized, for example, the urine of halal animals. So all these things are put down as najasate haqiqi and there's two types of that. Then we have najasate hukmi. Najasate hukmi. So we have najasate hukmi of two types. What is najas hukmi? Those impurity which cannot be seen. And there are two types. Hadase akbar, hadase asghar. Hadase akbar in need of ghusl. A person in the state of janabat, the woman after her menstrual cycle, she cleans this in najasate, and he hook me, which is comes under hadase akbar. And then we have the hadase asgar, a person in need of wuzu, so which cannot be seen, but he needs to cleanse himself, he needs to do wuzu. So these are all, look at the beauty of Islam. But in all these kind of situations, a person needs to make sure that he purifies himself. Even if he cannot purify, there's no water available. The Quran has said, فَإِلَّمْ تَجِدُوا مَا أَنْ فَتَيَمَّمُوا سُعِيدًا طَيِّبًا فَمُسَحُوا بِوُجُوهِكُمْ أَيْدِيكُمْ That if you can't find, if you can't find water, then do tayammum. So we know about tayammum. You make the intention, you wipe your face with uh, and sand, with earth and you also wipe your hands up to the elbows. So this is all these things, subhanallah, it signifies, it explains how important uh, purity is in Islam. So that's why, subhanallah, a person needs to keep that in mind. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us this purity in Islam, subhanallah. The Salman of somebody said to him that, oh, what kind of prophet you have? He teaches you everything. So he was an apologetic. He said, yes. He teaches us everything. He even teaches us how to clean ourselves after the call of nature. Because we didn't know this. And even till this day, many of the developed countries, they don't use water. Now the scientists and the doctors and the medical experts are saying, no, it's very important that you use water. And many are starting to develop and adopt this system of using water in the bathrooms. We need to understand the value of our religion. Subhanallah, when we are traveling, subhanallah, when I travel into the European countries and the different other first world countries and you go into the bathroom and you see no water there, then you really value Islamic morals, Islamic cleanliness. It's just amazing that you have to go with a bottle of water because there's no water available there. So Islam has taught us all this. This is very important. So like Ghusl, for example, if you look at the chapters, like obviously Quran mentions about Ghusl, about Wuzu, about Tayammum, about cleanliness and all this. But if you look at just the Hadith, and you want to just compile the hadith of cleanliness from Bukhari, Muslim, Abu Dawood, Nasai, Tirmizi, Ibn Majah. Just the Siha Sitta, the six most authentic books. You could write hundreds, if not thousands of hadith just on purity. Just on purity. Like the hadith says that it is wajib for every person to have ghusl once a week. So subhan, look at the beauty, Shaykh. Shaykh al-Hadith, Muhammad Zakaria, sabr rahmatullahi says that there's so many different types of hadith telling us about having ghusl. So some hadith tells you to have ghusl every week. Once a week, you have ghusl. Some hadith are telling you to have ghusl on Juma day. Some hadith are telling you to have ghusl on for Juma salah. So Shaykh Al-Aziz Mullah Muhammad Zakariya Sabra Rahmatullah Ali, these people are just amazing. He says that if a person has ghusl just before Juma namaz and he makes intention of all three, talking back about intention again, he'll get the reward of acting upon all the hadiths regarding these three matters. Because he's got it once a week, he got it on the day of Juma, and he's got it for Juma Namaz as well. If he does it after Juma Namaz, he'll get two rewards. Because Juma Namaz is already finished. He'll get the day of Juma, and he will get the weekly Ghusl. So that's why Tuhuru Shatrul Iman. So these kind of, especially now, the Hifazat Tadabir, the preventative measures that we told, we should wash our hands, and we should wash it properly. We need to do Wuzu. All these things in... Mm -hmm.